We start in space. This early British animation ever been had was made in 1917 by Dudley Buxton, whose arm we're about to see filling in the vast emptiness of space. Born in 1884, Buxton had spent the early part of his career establishing a modest reputation as an artist of humorous magazine illustrations and postcards. He was also a member of the eccentric club, but more importantly, he was a hugely significant but almost forgotten figure in the development of animation in Britain. Lightning sketch films, in which artists were filmed drawing comic sketches of Kaiser Wilhelm or more flattering portraits of British generals, were a common feature of early World War I cinema programmes. But as audiences tired of almost literally watching paint dry, the cleverer artists began to experiment with moving their drawings in front of the camera using stop action and most importantly stop motion. They became animators, bringing their drawings to life. So three years into the war, and Buxton has left the home front behind, taking us far from Earth to present the henpecked man on the moon, a rounded character able to roll his eyes and share his feelings with the audience. Thrown out by his wife, the man on the moon falls to Earth and into an apocalyptic landscape populated by a lone, desolate figure. Onwards a little, and we have the first reference in the film to the war that was all too real to the film's original audience. Why are you not in the army? he asks. The reply reveals that this volcanic landscape is in fact England, and this is the sole surviving Englishman. And this is where Buxton gets really clever. This isn't just a work of escapism. This is a shrewd and cunning piece of propaganda, wrapped up in a comic fantasy which goes on to be quietly shocking, as we shall see. So in this reality, it is 1967, and half a century earlier, Britain signed a premature peace deal to end the war. Everything was peaceful and, and idyllic. And then. What are these strange rumours from Germany? What's happening in the vast underground workshops? We find out one misty dawn on the coastline of Britain. Invasion. And this is where we really move into the realms of science fiction. Not just these futuristic aquatic tanks with their menacing jaws, not to mention the powerful guns. Hold on a minute. Look out! But also we have electric rays and airships. Just to remind you, this film was made in 1917. Dudley Buxton was working with ink, paper, chalk, a camera and his imagination. In the culmination of the attack, the tanks crawl their way through a devastated London. You can imagine the lump in audience's throat at the sight of a bomb damaged St Paul's Cathedral in the background. But here, we're gonna pause. This film survives largely thanks to two men. In 1964, eagle-eyed archive acquisitions officer Liam O'Leary spotted the collection of early nitrate films for sale in the small ad of the Exchange and Mark newspaper, the eBay of its day. Ever Been Had was one of 28 on offer, varying in price from a quid to £4.15 shillings, or £40 a lot plus postage. Ever the good public servant, Liam made a counter offer of £35 and a free pickup, but in the end the full price was paid. Nice try, Liam. Our other figure is Harold Brown, who was the BFI National Archive's technical guru since the day it opened in 1935. Liam's attempted haggling was a shrewd move as many of the films arrived in poor shape, including Ever Been Had. The nitrate print needed to be copied, and the only machine capable of handing it at the time was Harold's Mark IV, a film printer custom built for Meccano and Miscellanea, without which many early films would not have survived. Sadly, the original tinted nitrate print of Ever Been Had that Liam acquired back in the 1960s has since succumbed to decay. So when we restored the film in 2017, we used the black and white copy that Harold had made on the 4th of March 1970, bringing back the film's original colouring thanks to a careful notation that was made in an archive tint record. But let's return to London in Flames. Is this really the apocalyptic vision that audiences needed in 1917? How the hell are you going to get us out of this one, Dudley? Mr. Spinner Ditty? We cut back to the man on the moon and friend. Mr. Spinner Ditty? It turns out we're on a film set. Note the film camera on one man's shoulder and the loud hailer. Our last Englishman is an actor in costume. And the Germans? Dudley's clever propaganda message for 1917 audiences not only offers a bleak but thrilling warning of the consequences of ending the war too soon, it manages to end with a comic poke at the enemy that was sure to raise a laugh from contemporary audiences and perhaps still does so today. Remember the name, Dudley Buxton. 
He deserves a bigger place in British cinema history.